everybody. Welcome to your channel, CAVA Info Ventry. This is British here. My dear friends, agriculture is the backbone of the Indian economy. As you all know, that India is an agriculture based country where about 58% of the population is dependent on agriculture. Three bills on agriculture reforms were introduced in the parliament to replace the ordinance issued during the lockdown. These are the farmers produce, trade and commerce, promotion and facilitation bills 2020, the farmers empowerment and production, agreement of price assurance and farm services bill 2020, the essential commodities amendment bill 2020. Channel आपने subscribe करे दिया होगा, अगर आपने अभी तक इस चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया है तो अभी सब्सक्राइब करके बेल आइकन बटन को दबा दीजिए जिससे आगे आने वाले सभी वीडियोस के अपडेट आपको टाइमली मिलते रहें और ये आपके लिए बिल्कुल फ्री है नाउ इट इज यू माइट बी वाचिंग ऑन योर टीवी हीटेड डिस्कशंस ऑन फार्मर्स बिल व्हिच वर पास बाय लोकसभा on 17 September and by Rajya Sabha on 20th September and also widespread protest by farmers in various states including Punjab. Keep watching this video till end to take the full benefit on this issue. Initially, at the time of independence in India, farmers used to sell their agriculture products to consumers directly. At that point of time, Majority of the farmers were burdened with the debt taken from the various money lenders. Those money lenders then used to buy farmers agriculture produce at very low price. Due to their various needs, the farmers used to take loan from money lenders who used to charge very high rate of interest from them and ultimately the farmers were not able to repay loans along with interest and therefore the farmers were forced to sell their agriculture produce to those money lenders at a very low price and accordingly next time when the farmers have to sow the new crop then they have to again take loan from those money lenders. This was a vicious circle for farmers. Hence farmers were not able to come out of this vicious circle of loan from money lenders and accordingly they were exploited by money lenders to solve the issue of the farmers exploitation by money lenders government brought about the apmc act that is agriculture price marketing committee act according to this act the farmer cannot directly sell its agriculture produce to anyone and anyone cannot purchase directly from the farmers all the activities of the sale and purchase of agriculture produce shall be through APMC Monday. If any trader has to sale or purchase the agricultural produce from that APMC Mondays, then the trader has to obtain a license from APMC. Likewise, the farmer of a particular area has to sell his agriculture produce in that particular Monday only. The system of selling the agriculture products in a specific Monday is mandatory under the APMC Act. Therefore, if any trader has to purchase any agriculture produce from APMC, then he has to obtain a license from the APMC authority. The main drawback of the APMC system is that once the license is granted by the APMC to a trader, then only he can buy the product under APMC. Licenses are provided by APMC which are controlled by the state government. Persons who are very influential or close to the power in a particular state get these licenses to deal into the agriculture produce with the result what happens that the consumer gets the agriculture produce at a very high price as compared to the price which is received by the farmer from a trader for the sale of his agriculture produce and APMC. Originally, 
the objective to bring about the APMC Act was that the exploitation of the farmers may be minimized. The other object of the APMC Act was that farmers should not go into the clutches of middlemen and they should come out from the vicious circle of the money lending business as well as money lender. Over the years, the APMC Act lost its relevance because the commission agent, RPS and traders found out various ways to circumvent the APMC Act. Now, let us see how agricultural products are sold in APMC Monday. For this purpose, there is an auctioning system at APMC. The auction system may be divided into two parts. One is MSP, that is at minimum support price and another system is through price discovery system. The MSP is decided by the government of India for all states. MSP is decided by central government for 22 agriculture crops only and not for all the agriculture crops. MSP means that the auction of the agriculture produce cannot be done below MSP. MSP is the starting level and auction can be at or more than MSP price but not at the lower than MSP price. Other than those 22 crops for which the MSP is declared by central government, all other crops and agriculture products are sold or auctioned in the market through price discovery mechanism. Meaning thereby, how much is the demand and supply of a specified agriculture product in the market? The price is determined based upon that parameter. And this is called the price discovery method. Hence, the agriculture producers are sold through auction method. There is a complete supply chain for the agriculture produce from farmers to ultimate consumers. It passes through various middlemen who are known as RTRs and they charge their commission when it passes through their hands. And hence, the price of the agriculture produce ultimately in the hands of the consumer reaches at a very high as compared to what price is received by farmer for that product. The government of India thought that this middleman or RTRs in the supply chain of agriculture products should be removed so that its benefit can be reaped by the ultimate consumers and the price of the agriculture product can be brought down. The system of selling agriculture products is like that. The farmer will go first with his agriculture produce to the APMC or the Mandi Samiti. There, he has to contact a commission agent or RTA. These commission agents will contact the traders to whom this product will be sold. There will be a negotiation on the price for agriculture product except those 22 items for which the MSP has been declared by central government and there will be a negotiation based upon the demand and supply of that product in the market. For your information, the system of negotiation between the commission agent and traders is not transparent. Also, it is not digital and therefore prone to various shortcomings and bottlenecks. Once there is a negotiation between the trader and the RTA. Then that transaction is communicated to the farmer by RTA that at what price his agriculture produce has been sold. The RTA charges their commission for the sale of these products from farmers. Once the trader purchases these products from the farmer, then it will be sold by him to wholesaler. Then after it goes to the retailer from wholesaler, then to various vendors from whom you purchase these agricultural products. Once this product reaches in your hand as a consumer from the farmer, then the price of the product would have been doubled or in some cases even tripled. For example, we take the case of tomato. Tomato which you are getting for rupees 60 per kg from your sabjiwala for that farmer get only rupees 5 
10 or 20 rupees per kg from trader. I shall be discussing with you the various shortcomings and borderlands of the APMC Mundi system, which is the main reason of exploitation of the farmers by artias and middlemen in the trading of agriculture produce. How the system works? The farmer shall go to the APMC Mundi along with his agriculture produce. Then he has to meet with the commission agent. Those are basically called artias or commission agents. These commission agents will in turn connect with traders and then they will negotiate the price with the trader and they will discover the appropriate price for that agriculture produce. This process of price discovery is not transparent. Then after once the price is negotiated by the commission agent with the trader, then that commission agent tells that farmer that at what price is agriculture produce will be sold. The commission agent charges around 8 to 8 and a half percent of the total sale price. This is called the market fee which is to be paid by the farmer. Therefore, the farmer gets the total sale price after deducting this 8 and a half percent of the market price. What happens after trader sells this agriculture produce to the wholesaler? The wholesaler sells it to the retailer and then that retailer sells it to various small vendors and then after from vendors you purchase these agriculture product. Once this agriculture produce reaches to your hands as the ultimate consumer then the price of that agriculture produce becomes very high that is it becomes almost double or in some cases even triple from the price what is received by the farmer from trader. In this process of whole supply chain around 25% of the agriculture produce is lost due to various bottlenecks in the supply chain system. You will be surprised to know that the wholesale price of onion in the country's largest mandi at Nasik is around Presently, rupees 14 per kg, while you are purchasing the same onion from your sabji wala at rupees 40 to 50 rupees per kg. Where is this difference going? This difference is going to the middleman who purchases the onion from the producer farmers and ultimately sells it to the consumers. They decide that at how much price the onion should be purchased from the farmers and at how much price it should be sold to the ultimate consumer. So this is the existing APMC system. There are two shortcomings or flaw in the system. First thing, you can become the trader in APMC only after getting the license. Since the APMC market is controlled by the state government, so the traders are only those who are very close to the state government and only they get the license to trade at APMC. Those who are either having the political connections or political influence, only they get the license as a trader in APMC in a state. This leads to corruption. The second shortcoming or flaw of the system is that there are so many intermediaries or middlemen between the farmer and the ultimate consumer. That the ultimate consumer gets the same agricultural produce at an exorbitantly high price like I told you in case of onion. And the farmer has to sell his agriculture produce at a very low price. In 1963, when the APMC Act was enacted, the object was to save farmers from the exploitation of middlemen, to save them from money lenders, and to save them from exploitation. APMC itself became the cause of exploitation. Say, for instance, the APMC Act talks about the MSP, that is the minimum support price, but what happens is that traders form cartel, they form a drop. And they tell to the farmer 
that because your product is of the inferior quality, it is not up to the mark, and therefore we will not purchase your product at MSP, and we will purchase it below MSP. Now see the plight of the farmer because the agricultural produce are of perishable in nature, and the farmers do not have proper storage facility for their agriculture produce. Then they have to perform sell their product at lesser price, which is offered by those traders, cartel, that is even below MSP, because they cannot store their products for a long period. Otherwise, their agriculture produce will be lost, and accordingly, the price of agriculture produce will further go down with the passage of time. Further, they have already incurred the transportation charges for bringing their agricultural product from their farms to APMC Monday. And if their product is not sold, then the transportation charges already paid by them shall become total loss for them. Therefore, the traders who form the cartel purchase those products even at the below MSP from the farmers and keep taking the benefit of their ignorance or their various difficulties. Therefore, the farmers are forced to sell their agriculture produce even below MSP also. There have been a regular protest by the farmers to increase the MSP in the past in various states. There is no regional minimum support price in our country, but the MSP is declared by the central government for entire country. There may be a situation where the cost of the production of agriculture produce in a particular state may be lower, while cost of production for the same agriculture product may be high in another state, and therefore it may be remunerative in one state to produce one particular crop because the cost of production in that state is low and it may not be remunerative to produce an agriculture crop in another state where the cost of producing that crop or agriculture produce is high. Therefore, the APMC Act itself became the source of monopoly and monopolistic practices and exploitation of farmers and became counterproductive. For your information, the new system which is proposed by these three bills is already adopted by various states like Maharashtra, Karnataka, Bihar and several other states also. Various states have brought the new laws keeping in view the various shortcomings of the APMC like how much will be the penalty if a trader purchases the agricultural produce from the farmers below the MSP price? Since the existing system of APMC has created the monopoly, which is not good for the society, therefore the reforms in the agriculture is the need of the heart to benefit the farmers as well as the consumers. According to the National Crime Records Bureau, that is, NCRB data, there was suicidal rate in the deeply stressed farming sector accounted for 7.4% of the total suicide in the country, resulting in the deaths of close to 6,000 farmers and 4,000 agricultural laborers. This is happening due to exploitation of the farmers by the artias and middlemen and farmers very bad financial position. I feel that the more revolutionary bill in the form of farmers bill has been introduced in the parliament which is bigger than the demonetization because it is going to stop the commission charged by the artias or middlemen in the trade of sale and purchase of agriculture produce as well as the fee and taxes charged by APMC and the state government. After these bills become the act, then the commission system will be completely thing of the past 
if farmer chooses to sell his agriculture product outside the apmc mandi a state may be having around 40 to 50000 middlemen or rpas in the trade of agriculture produce and they will be severely and hardly hit by this bill on farmers because now the farmers have a choice to sell his agricultural produce outside the APMC Monday also and therefore need not to pay the commission to these middlemen and taxes and fee to the state government and APMC. Normally the agriculture produce is purchased by these middlemen and they are the person who decide the price at which the agricultural produce will be purchased from the farmers and they also decided that at what price the agriculture produce will be sold to the ultimate consumers. And therefore, the prices of agriculture producers fluctuate very sharply. Presently, the farmers can sell their farm products outside the mandi also, but legally, they are not allowed to sell their farm products outside the mandi. And they have to sell their product only in the APMC Monday, the system which has been developed over the past 70 years is that the Kisan or the farmer will sell his agriculture products only in the APMC Monday. And from Monday, this agriculture product will go to the outside world. And from there, this will reach to the ultimate consumers. Where is this car born? By the farmers, if his fossil kharab ho gai, either due to wet weather or no monsoon rains or excessive monsoon rain, then the losses are suffered by the farmers, but there is no loss to the middleman or artias. Whenever farmer sells his agriculture produce to artias or trader, they get their commission or cut. Presently also, a lot of purchase of agriculture produce is made outside the APMC Monday and it is estimated that around more than 40% of the total agriculture produce is sold outside the APMC Monday. It is illegal but it is still happening and government is not in a position to check or regulate this. Therefore, various cartels made by the traders or middlemen outside the Monday used to purchase these products from the farmers at their own sweet will and at the price which they offer to the farmers. Middlemen or traders in turn sell these products to the outside world at their own decided price and making a huge profit on that. In the present system, when the farmer is selling his agriculture produce before reaching to the ultimate consumer, it was suffering a tax commission or sales of around 8.5%. Out of this 8.5%, the middlemen or RTR are getting 2.5%, APMC are getting around 3%, and the states are getting around 3%. Therefore, out of this 8.5%, only 2.5% is going to middlemen. However, nobody believes this because there is no transparency in the transactions entered into by the middlemen or the RTRs with the farmers and there is no surety that how much cut that RTRs or middlemen are taking in the form of lesser price being paid to the farmers and higher prices charged from the ultimate consumer. There is a lot of brastachar prevailing in the Mondays in the sale and purchase of the agriculture produce. And it is beyond the government control to check that male practices which are prevailing in the APMC Mondays. As I told you that around 40% of the agriculture produce is sold outside the APMC Mondays and for another 40% there is no clue to the government that where it is going and sold. 
and only 20% of the total farm products is coming to APMC Monday. Now the government has given an option to that 20% which is coming to APMC Mondays that they can also sell their agriculture produce outside the APMC Mondays and that too there will be no fee or taxes being charged if it is sold outside the APMC Mondays. This is a revolutionary step by the government and major reform in the farm sector which was overdue and this is a radical change in the process of sale and purchase of the agriculture produce by the farmers and it will change the entire landscape of the farm sector in the years to come. Keep watching this channel for more interesting videos shortly. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.